Okay, this is more spin-off from that uh, project I've been working on for quite a while now about the proximity sensors and how that you I was using a proximity sensor to detect when to turn a coil on and off and rotate a rotor. And I wanted to try to build my own proximity sensor, and it's been a major fail, but I've learned some things along the way which are kind of interesting. Um, on the proximity sensor, they have a tank circuit that they vary with either a change in capacitance or change in induction. Another circuit, a Schmidt trigger type of circuit, flips the switch. And that's what I was using to turn the rotor was flipping the switch on a coil using a proximity sensor to make the thing work. And I didn't like the fact it took three volts and it used power all the time, so I kind of went away from it. But Along the way, I've discovered some things, and uh, I couldn't get this Hartley to do what I wanted it to do, even though it ran on really low power. So I started doing more research, and I went back to my good old friend, the uh, complementary transistor circuit, and I started looking into that, and I found this one online that was just a blinker, that they put a capacitor right in there, and they blinked an LED. And I looked at that thing, and I'm thinking, hmm, that's, that's curious. So... I built up a little um, project here with a rotor on it and found out that just like in my all-time running, um, non-stop running motors, this uh, rotor will induce a current in a coil and flip the switch on this circuit. But on this one here, with this configuration, with the capacitor and the way this is set up, you basically just got a blinker. And that's all that is, is a blinker. But when the magnet goes by the front of that coil, it overrides the blinker in such a way that it, it actually uh, turns that into a driver circuit. So I just wanted to play around with that some more. This is a super capacitor. It's got some energy in it, just like that over there. Uh, that one there runs for about six hours. on a, I think it's a six farad super cap, 2.7 volt. But... Uh, this is another thing I wanted to share. On this rotor system here, this is uh, basically like how Slider's doing it. You uh, suspend the needle with magnets. And then in the bottom, he uses a uh, ceramic tile for the bottom bearing on his needle. But what I did is I put a steel screw with good oil, and the needle is uh, harder than the steel screw. So the wear takes place on the Phillips screw. And on this one, you notice how I got the magnets? They're screwed onto the rotor. So you make a better flywheel out of it by doing that. And this turned out to be a real successful uh, arrangement with this, um, with this type of setup here. If I can get this on here again, there we go. And it won't self-start, which is something I'm disappointed with. But if you get it going, this thing will keep it going. And it, this particular driver drives about, draws about uh, 2 milliamps, which is actually quite a bit. But it does work pretty darn well. And uh, I just thought I would share that, that that's where I'm at with this, um, this um, circuitry that was used in the um, proximity sensors. And it looks like I'm not going to be able to build my own proximity sensor, at least not that type that uses a change in capacity or induction. But this is actually operating with a change in induction on that uh, coil there. And it's, it's inducing a current into the coil, which is causing the circuit to override the flash that's going on all the time. So anyway, that's the latest with my projects. Thanks for watching.